I'm Mick Garris, and I'd like to welcome you once again to the Z Channel's showcase for Flights of Fantasy, the Fantasy Film Festival. Now say that five times fast. Tonight's film is an interesting film by an interesting filmmaker. It's Blue Sunshine, and we have the director of the film with us, Jeff Lieberman. Jeff, thanks for joining us here on the Fantasy Film Festival. The first question is the obvious one. Um, why horror films? You've made two films to date. They've both been horror films. Well. I, um, I like comedy, and I equate horror and comedy. They're almost the same thing to me. I think that the, the uh, qualities that you need to set up a funny gag, visual gag, and a scary visual gag, uh, they're, not the same, they're, they're not the same content, but it's the same ingredients of setup, pacing, timing, weight, and punchline, you know? So you're after primarily a visceral response. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that, you know, some of the most effective stuff, if you examine it and you say, it's very close to being funny. I think they're all funny. Right. And especially, you know, the things that, well, you'll see a couple of clips. I think it's hysterical. Now, your first, fir uh, your first film was Squirm, which is yeah. about an attack of killer earthworms, basically, right? Or sandworms. Yeah, yeah Marlon. Uh, how did that come about? Okay, this is a true story. When I was a kid, we had a pool in the backyard. I live in New York, and it was the kind of pool that, that you take apart in the winter, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, it had a big, muddy flat with a light over it that we use in the summertime. There was a rainstorm, and it was really muddy this particular time. My brother wanted to go fishing. He took a train transformer, and he hooked it up, and he put the two poles in the mud, and the worms came out. Whoa. And it works um, because the electricity and the, the water conducts the electricity and drove all the worms out. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, earthworms can't hurt you, but there's also a kind of worm called the uh, Glycera worm, which is a saltwater worm that has these pinchers that are common in Maine and Northeast. So I put those two ideas together and came up with Squirm. And so the basis of Squirm is uh, there's a rainstorm power lines fall into the ground and bring Yeah, there's one cable that, that's on a down power line sending thousands of volts of electricity into the ground. Activating the killer worms. Yeah, yeah. but they won't come out during the day because the, because the sun, worms are repelled by the light. Mm -hmm. So at nighttime they're going to come out. Okay, you did a test film, didn't you? Uh, yeah. To see if worms could be found. Yeah, I didn't think that worms are necessarily scary myself, and I, uh, you know, or I had a hunch that I could make them scary, but I had to convince myself before committing that amount of time and energy. So I um, took an 8-millimeter camera, and I got a bunch of these sandworms, and I took my daughter, had a doll uh, that I covered with worms, and I <laughs> set it up in my apartment, and I shot these worms. So I took the film to the drugstore to have it develop, you know, 8-millimeter. And we wait a week, and we get, get the film back, and we sit down and watch it, and it's some kid's birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> and so somewhere out there in uh, the suburbs, uh, somebody got that test film of Squirm, and they probably sat down, the whole family, you know, waiting. <laughs> Celebrating the birthday party once again, and they get the earthworms over the doll. Why do you think nature and animal horror is so popular, from the birds through Jaws and all the variations on the theme? Well, I think that, um, it's the reality of it. It's things that, you know, in the 50s when they made these giant ants and giant this, and in your experience, you don't see giant anything, you know. Um, so, but I, I think that everybody else, including myself, ripped off Hitchcock birds. Once you did the birds, it, it's the concept of taking a common thing and looking at it in a different way. Once you get that idea, which was his notion, I guess, uh, everybody else is just uh, catching in on the idea. I mean, I didn't really bring anything fresh to that particular. Well, that's an interesting point you make. Now, why do you think the audience keeps accepting that? Uh, well, I think they have phobias. You know, 
people are afraid of things like snakes, worms, things that crawl. I, I'm not, so I, but I, I, so I don't understand it. But, I am. But um, I'm afraid of blondes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I guess that, you know, certain people, you know, movies probably freak out all the people afraid of spiders, and then people that are not afraid of spiders will say, gee, I don't see what's so scary about that. Let's talk a little bit, before we see the uh, clip from Scorn, let's talk a little about the effects work. Rick Baker did the makeup effects, right? Right. Yeah, we had a, a problem that what could worms do to you, you know? I mean, if you think about I it. I can't lift a dagger. And yeah, yeah, right. And uh, so I figured that these worms are so charged up that what they do is when they bite, they actually burrow into you, you know, at high speed and you can't stop them. Uh, and in order to create a convincing effect, I have this thing about special effects makeup that if you can't watch it, if you, if you have to cut around it and cut to people's reactions only, but don't show the money. What I call the money, the joke, is the thing. Right. In the old Japanese movies, everything but the money would be shown. They'd show reaction shots until you get nauseous. <laughs> but the thing itself was missing because they didn't have the money to do it, the, the dollars to do the money shot. Right. And I insisted that I see these worms actually burrow. And Rick Baker said, it's impossible. And I said, do it. And he did it. And, uh, I think it's pretty sad. Let's set up the clip we're going to see. We're going to yeah. see two short scenes from the film Squirm, Jeff's first film. Uh, do you want to set that up at all? Well, it's basically this is character, Roger, whose father owns a worm farm. He's the, the uh, I guess, the antagonist in the story. Um, but one interesting thing is that he, I put a backstory in there that I got from what my brother did with the train transformer. He's terrified of worms because his father, once hooked up to get his worm farm running successfully, <laughs> did this with, you know, experimenting way, with ways to get him out of the ground, and he did this with a train transformer, and he lost his thumb. Ooh. Roger did. So ever since then, he's been terrified of worms. Okay, well, let's take a, oh, a look sorry. at a couple short clips from Squirm uh, by Jeff Lieberman. I'm ready. I'm ready to tell Dad I don't want to take over no worm farm. You know, I got a surprise for you. Really? What is it? Yeah, I told you it's a surprise. <laughs> well, what is it? Here and bust his way in. Well, if he come near you again, I'm gonna bust his liver loose if he tries to touch you. No! 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 Oh! 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 Interesting, Jeff. A lot of fun. Yeah. How did you get into filmmaking? I um, was in painting and drawing into the School of Visual Arts, and um, I started getting into writing, really. Not intentionally being a filmmaker, but uh, for animation, for my drawing, you know. And uh, really got in. I think that the best way, if anybody wants to direct, it's funny that the writing is really the only... Writing or a lot of rich uncles, you know, <laughs> one or the other. Okay, we're going to see Blue Sunshine. Tell us a little bit about the background of that film. Uh, 
I am 32, which means that in the 60s, what they call the late 60s, I was in the drug thing. And uh, I thought that somebody should do a horror movie based on, you know, that everybody would talk about the horrors of drugs, you know, right. what horror, not from the establishment point of view, but the people that were taking the drugs. So at first I was thinking, well, what about all these people that are taking LSD? What's going to happen to their offspring? And then uh, I took it one step further and said, well, what's going to happen to them 10 years from now? Uh, and I came up with this idea of uh, a delayed reaction on the, you know, chromosome damage. And I did a lot of research on it, and basically this could happen tomorrow. Not, mm -hmm. you know, a variation of it could happen. What is Blue Sunshine of the title? Blue Sunshine is a strain of LSD that went around Stanford in 67. Uh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> and at that point, the plot thickens. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm interested in, in finding out your opinion on whether you feel you're being pigeonholed in the horror genre, or if you're comfortable with that, or if you have aspirations other than horror films. Well, I think that um, it's not a question of aspirations. I, d I don't think that horror, horror is just one side of, I think, anybody's personality. And uh, I, again, I say that I, I look at them as comedy. Mm -hmm. I really do. I don't think if I did a comedy film tomorrow, I would approach it the same way. Um, maybe that's why I'll never get a comedy film. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, and, and I think that if you do it well and it's effective and you achieve the goals that you, you get a charge. When that scene that you just saw, I sat in the theater with 800 people and it worked, you know, it worked to the point that I wanted it to work and I got a, a thrill about it. So I don't put down horror movies. I just, you know, I would like to do other things and horror movies also. Right. Your next film is a horror movie as well, isn't it? It, it is, yeah, but it's more in, this, in the line of uh, deliverance. I, would you call that a horror movie or no. adventure, Elements horror? Or, yeah. yeah, it's more a people horror, you know, uh, and a character breakdown. Uh, it's, it's a cross between, I guess, deliverance and Lord of the Flies mm -hmm. and the primitive thing inside of all of us. It's called Just Before Dawn. You're here casting that right now. Yeah, right? we're going to shoot in uh, Oregon. So if I don't get blown up by the volcano. Right. How close to the volcano? We're about uh, 150 miles away from, from the volcano. What led to the selection of that location? Uh, just the general uh, look of the place. I mean, it's just fantastic. There's 100-foot waterfalls coming out of every mountaintop. And it's, uh, it's, it's got to be a very remote, secluded area. And I, you know, I could have mm -hmm. shot it anywhere in the, in the country. But that's just the best place. I didn't ask for the volcano, right? But I'm going to live with it. It's all covered with ash right now. I assume your location. Uh, the actual forest that we're going to shoot in is not covered with ash, but the town we're going to stay in is. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, I saw Victor Mature walking down the street. Is that right? <laughs> he used to be in all those volcano movies. Did you cast a little joke there? No. <laughs> okay. Well, we've been talking to Jeff Lieberman about Blue Sunshine, and we'd like you to stay tuned and see for yourself. Blue Sunshine, the killer acid of the 60s, rearing its head again. Jeff Lieberman, thanks for joining us. Jimmy. And thanks.